captain of Cuba's airspace. The one thing that the day of the shootdown um, that, that they found that was perhaps you could say was incorrect on Mr. Basulto's part was the fact that when he flew, he flies parallel to the coast of Cuba. And when he was flying that day parallel to the coast of Cuba, the coast is not a straight line. So it's very difficult to fly, you know, in a manner that would keep you exactly 12 miles away. And he did a slight incursion into Cuban airspace, but it was just a matter of nothing one two three minutes and when they realized that they were a little bit too close and we're not talking about a, a great deal of, my, of of distance that he was in when they realized it they exited out and for that reason they um, came to revoke his license because he shouldn't have been flying within the territorial limits of of the government of, of, of cuba's airspace it did really make a difference because Mr. Basulto does not need his license to fly his airplane. If you fly in an airplane with a um, licensed pilot sitting next to you, you can fly the plane. And unfortunately, some of the young kids that got shot down and they made these little stickers, not stickers, they were these little flyers, tiny. I think I have a copy here, I'll show you. They figured out a way that with the winds from international airspace, they could fly, open up the back of the airplane, and release thousands of these leaflets and they would end up all over Havana, which is what he did. He went up with these young kids that unfortunately got shot down and they released thousands of these leaflets and they fell all over. Te pedimos no ver el rumbo la dirección y guíe nuestros aeroplanos hacia donde están nuestros hermanos en el mar. José Basulto, initially, in the early part of his life, he was trained by the CIA, he fought in the Bay of Pigs, he infiltrated Cuba, and yes, he had a, he was taught to have a violent background. Not that, I mean, he's never killed anybody in his life, thank God, but he was trained by the U.S. for that. According to the report presented by Cuba to the International Civil Aviation Organization, Brothers to the Rescue planes cross four or five miles into Cuban jurisdictional waters. Two planes continue straight toward the island's coastline, and the third, piloted by Jose Basuto, return immediately to U.S. territory. Major Ramon Hernandez, now Chief of Operations in an Eastern Cuba military unit, testified on his reconnaissance mission to find the remains of the Brothers to the Rescue planes. Un marinero me informa que había un objeto en el agua, que dicho objeto, cuando le realizo la inspección, se trataba de este maletín, de esta forma desgarrada, que cuando eh, lo suben a bordo, que les realizo la inspección, eh, tenía a bordo las dos cartas eh, aéreas, de navegación aérea, más en su interior, eh, dentro del depósito, un cargador de batería. The mass found inside the briefcase printed in accordance with U.S. Federal Navigation Agency regulations clearly indicate that planes flying over Cuban territory must file the flight plan at least one hour before takeoff, communicate directly with Havana 10 minutes before entering its airspace, and observe Cuban regulations when reaching national territory. Defense Counselor Paul McKenna called several witnesses before the jury to help him validate the thesis that the planes fell over Cuban territorial water.
Jorge Luis Diamantes has been an oceanographer for over 20 years. Today he has the Cuban Academy of Sciences, research expeditions which study sea currents around the island. Using what is known as inverse stream forecast, Diamantes determined a probable location zone for the site where the briefcase should have fallen. Aproximadamente unas cuatro millas al norte de La Habana, unas cuatro millas al norte de, del faro de La Habana, el, del morro, este, se situó o se encontró el maletín. Eh, según el sistema de corriente aquí que nosotros habíamos investigado y en realidad el patrón de corriente aquí era al este. A partir de esta situación nosotros hicimos el cálculo inverso de la, de la corriente. Teniendo la velocidad y dirección de la corriente, nosotros podemos hacer el cálculo inverso de la misma obteniendo la zona eh, aproximada donde se, de donde salió el objeto que se encontró. This is where the border patrols found the briefcase. This is the regular sea stream flow. When reversed, it shows the approximate area where the briefcase fell. Lieutenant Colonel Cecilio Martinez was the radar crew chief of the nearby coastal region on the day of the events. El 24 de febrero del año 1996 nosotros estábamos casi acostumbrados a que esos vuelos se realizaran todos los sábados. Aproximadamente a las 14, 14 y 30 aparece el primer objetivo en la pantalla. Es destacar de que estos objetivos tienen características subgéneris. Son objetivos que vuelan a baja y muy baja altura y a poca velocidad. Al ser detectado ya ordeno conectar marca de distancia y marca de ácimo y pasar el radar a girar a seis revoluciones por minuto con el objetivo de obtener más datos sobre él. Téngase en cuenta que a seis revoluciones por minuto nuestro radar ilumina el blanco cada 20 segundos. No obstante, la discreción que teníamos en la plancheta era de un minuto para ganar en precisión. Las avionetas continuaron entrando aproximadamente hasta las 15, 15 y 5. Continuaron entrando. Entraron tres avionetas hicieron incursión al norte de La Habana. De esas tres avionetas, una regresó. Las otras dos nosotros las perdimos de nuestra pantalla. Hicimos la marcación en la plancheta y pudimos determinar trazo a trazo cuál fue el nivel de violación que tuvieron esas avionetas. En la ilustración made by the radar operator Cecilio, we can clearly follow the aircraft over Cuban territory. I did spend a lot of time trying to explain to the jury why the Cubans, uh, why the Cuban government shot the planes down. And one of the issues was that these planes had flown over the Cuban capital and that Basulto had uh, been talking with people about, you know, throwing things out, the, out of the plane, like, you know, bombs and other kind of devices. So it, it wasn't just simply a question of, you know, a civilian plane in their airspace. These planes could pose a threat. And, you know, not too long after the verdict came out in this case, that the following fall, uh, you know, we had 911, where planes did run into buildings. And maybe at that time at our, of our trial, the government argued how preposterous it was that any plane posed a threat to, to Cuba. Well, you know, planes have to follow certain rules, and these planes weren't. They were flying however they wanted, breaking all the rules of civil aviation, flying in restricted airspaces. Cuba, just like Washington, D.C., has restricted airspace over Havana. Training day at the military airport includes pilots from various generations. Colonel Eddie Hernandez Capote, former combat pilot, served as an advisor to the defense. Es interesante también que en este vuelo, cuando Basulto va regresando, hay un momento que los radares nuestros lo pierden. Incluso los radares norteamericanos pierden la avioneta de Basulto porque se pega al agua. 
él desciende tanto, este trazo azul que dice aquí N2506, 